In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to take an advanced look at using the text blur effect. We have another tutorial that introduces you to that, but we'd like to take those techniques a little bit farther in this tutorial. To summarize, what we have on track number one is a 23 second clip of some cyclists. And then we've taken the text blur effect from the effect room dropped it into our effect track immediately below the cycling clip. When we play it, we see the word cyberlink, which is a default word, scrolling across the screen and the cyclists behind it. And everything else is blurred out. When the effect ends, notice it snaps uh, from the effect to something very clear. What I'd like to do is Use some keyframing to make that transition not quite so dramatic, but a little bit more gradual because it goes from this line to that line. Let's see how we can do that. I'll click on the text blur effect and I'll click on the modify button above our uh, timelines. And then what I'd like to do is go into my keyframing. I click on the keyframe button and it has all these qualities that I can alter or change in my text. I can actually change the title here. I can change the font, the scroll, etc. We're just going to focus on the bottom two, contrast and degree. So when this starts out on the very left side, I'm going to set a keyframe by clicking on the diamond. But first of all, I want to take my contrast way up. You notice the preview screen darkens and the degree way up. And now it automatically, when I move the sliders, it set the keyframes for me. Then we'll go a little bit into our text here. Uh, maybe, oh, half, two-thirds through. And I will right-click with the mouse here on the contrast scale and click on Duplicate Previous Keyframe. Right-click on the degree and do the same. And so between these two moments in time, uh, we're going to have uh, the contrast and degree to be stable. Then I move to the very end and drag my timeline marker to the right. And now here we're going to drop them both down to 0 and 1, respectively. Okay, and now I have set three keyframes. Stable, and then we'll see a gradual clearing between this keyframe and the end keyframe. I'll close that out. So now when I go to the beginning of the clip and we go ahead and play it, what we see is it starts out really dense, really uh, active, and then it starts to lighten up toward the end. And then when we get to the end, it fades gradually into the bikers. I like that. It, it's a lot more of a natural look. I actually took this and did it again into a mini movie. We'll play it here and you can see it again. There we go, Cyberlink. And then it slowly s stays the same and then this one softens slower. Now how did I get it to do that? What I did was when I went into my, if, into my clip, I'll go here, click on Modify again. I actually added on that one a lot of spaces behind the word Cyberlink. That gave me more time uh, to change what was going on in terms of keyframing. So that's another kind of trick you can do at the end or at the beginning. You could just add spaces here and it will lengthen um, that, that role of the text, the placement of the text in the clip. I'd like to add another thing that you can do. If you do not want the text blur to position the text directly in the center of the screen, for example, when I do that and drop it, embed it in my top clip, and I play it, the text, which defaults to the word cyberlink, will occur only in the middle of the screen. And as we've said earlier, you can't change that. But you can trick the system to do that anyway. Let me show you what we're going to do. I'm going to control Z out of there, and then I'm going to take my clip and copy it with control C, Move down to track number uh, two and highlight that. Do control V to paste. Now I have two identical clips, one on top of the other. So when I play, uh, it looks like I only have one since every pixel overlays the other pixel. Then what I like to do is take the bottom clip, the one that will be on top, 
and what I want to do is crop it. So I click on the Tools menu and choose Power Tools. And then I choose Crop and Zoom. Now this will only work if you have PowerDirector 15 or 16. It didn't work on my copy 13 and I don't have a 14 so I can't testify about that one. But when you have Crop and Zoom you need a Crop and Zoom option that gives you a, a, a free form. So that's what we're going to use here. And I took my grid lines and I broke my screen into thirds. So I'm going to take this and reduce this to about a third of the size. It doesn't have to be exact, but that's a nice place to start. And then I'll, uh, I'm going to take it and I can either drag it up to the top or down to the bottom. Then I click on OK. Now here I have my overlay, which is the third, but it's in the center. So what I need to do on that same track, number two, is press the F2 key or double click to get in my PIP designer. And then I'll move my image uh, to perfectly overlay the other one and then click on OK. And so now if I go ahead and play this, I've got the bottom layer, which is the full picture, the top layer, which is the top third. So here's what, here's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to take my same track number two. It's highlighted. And we, we will go to our text blur, drag and drop it on track number two. And now if you look very carefully as we go ahead and play this, we have it applied only within that track. And now I have it working inside of that particular segment of my picture. So I kind of have the best of both worlds. I have this working where I want it to, and I have the other stuff uh, operating behind it. So in effect, I have moved that. If I were to do this, uh, I would probably make one change here. I click on here, click on Effect, and then we'll go ahead to our fonts. And I think I'd make it probably a little smaller. Let's try a 90 and see how that works. And then we'll go ahead and play it. And yeah, the, I, the characters are still kind of uh, flattened, but they're not quite as big. But so that gives you one way in which you can trick the system uh, to make this crawl somewhere besides the very center of the screen.